Hawkeye, a superhero who hasn't really been given the credit he deserves, a guy who tries to keep the Avengers grounded. Okay, look, the city's flying. We're fighting an army of robots. And I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. Well, guess what? Now he has his own show. I've seen episodes one and two, and today, we're gonna talk about it. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. We like to cover all things movies, TV, and Marvel on this channel. Massive fan of this universe. I was excited for episodes one and two. They're not out yet, so I'm not going to spoil anything in this review. I'm gonna tell you whether or not this show is worth it and how it stands out as something different from the rest of the MCU TV shows. Let's get into it. So former Avenger Clint Barton has a seemingly simple mission, get back to his family for Christmas. Possible? Maybe with the help of Kate Bishop, a 22-year-old archer with dreams of becoming a superhero. The two are forced to work together when a presence from Barton's past threatens to derail far more than the festive spirit. First and foremost, what all superhero fans are wanting to hear about in this review is this a Christmas show at heart. Is this a show celebrating the holiday spirit? And the answer is, yeah, it is. It's very much a show centered around the holidays, starting out with Clint and his family, just trying to live in the now and not worry so much about the past. And that's something that is consistently brought up throughout the first two episodes. The stuff with the Avengers, all of the injuries that he sustained and is still treating at this point in time, how those battles and just the toll that it's been taking on him throughout the years, well, it's all kind of been culminating. It's been taking a toll mentally and physically. And that's one thing I was hoping we would see with this show is how has Clint been able to handle being one of the only human non-superhero members of the Avengers? But not only that, he doesn't even have, you know, Iron Man, Tony Stark, he's technically a human, but he's a genius and he has the suit. This is a guy with arrows. Granted, one of the most accurate archers in history. Iron Man did not make that legolas joke for no reason, right? Uh, but yeah, he's just the guy with arrows. And we've seen this in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. There is an Avengers musical and to see Hawkeye's role in that musical was kind of funny. And even though he's clearly not afraid to confront these types of things because they go to the musical in the first place, it is something he's dealing with. And when he sees certain things, certain cues, you can almost feel the stress coming on as an audience when he sees or feels those cues. So I thought the show did a really good job of that. Okay, so that's Hawkeye, right? The name of the show. What more is there? Well, Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop. And this is just as much her show, at least in the first two episodes, as it is Clint Barton's. Because we get an entire backstory for Kate Bishop. I won't say how it comes about, but she looks up to Hawkeye in a way that kind of pushes her to become good in that field of work, if you will. And she becomes an extremely skillful archer, but she's growing up within the confines of a rich family. And a family that she feels distant from because they're just not on the same brainwave. And we see her getting into a little bit of trouble at the beginning of that first episode. And her mom, Eleanor, well, she's not very happy about it. But then we learn more about her family and kind of the world that they are a part of. And after two episodes, we don't know too much just yet, but there's more there than meets the eye. And there's something that Kate Bishop is kind of, um, she's kind of speculating, right? So she goes on a bit of a journey, a bit of a mission, and somehow runs across something that Hawkeye is very familiar with. So once they cross paths, you get that dialogue and banter, you know, straight out of Kate Bishop's origin from the comics that feels so authentic and natural and quirky and comedic. And this is a show that doesn't go that extra mile of being something utterly creative and different and overall grand as other MCU shows thus far. You know, Loki taking place in space. You have that galactic feel to it, exploring the multiverse, WandaVision, everything that goes down in that town, uh, a very artistic take on two superheroes. And then the Falcon and the Winter Soldier that is more of a spy espionage thriller type show. This is a quirky Christmas action comedy. That's exactly what it is at its core in the first two episodes. 
and it does feel the most MCU out of all of the MCU shows thus far, whether that be looking at the action, that banter between superheroes, how it's a lot more comedy-based than anything, uh, the one-liners kind of exploring the ins and outs of how that Avengers team worked at one point and kind of the fallout from Clint Barton's perspective. But one thing I, I like about this show is it's not only doing all of those things, it's adding in this extra layer and level of heart that kind of strips everything back and makes this show more simplistic because it really is all about Clint Barton wanting to enjoy the holidays with his family. But he can't do that because he runs into this problem. And I won't say Kate Bishop is the problem, but she is involved in that problem. So they have to team up and from there the adventure begins. And while I thought the action was fun and compelling, you can tell it's a bit of a lower budget than other MCU shows. I wasn't really blown away by the action. I was also watching a screener that had my name plastered on the screen, so it was kind of hard to see certain things. <laughs> it looked like this because that's that's what they do. But I think the action is good enough, and we really haven't seen Hawkeye or Kate Bishop do a lot with arrows just yet. It's been more hand-to-hand -hand combat in the first two episodes, so once that starts to pick up and we get a few of those car chases, like that teaser that we saw, uh, I think it's going to pick up. And there's something at the end of episode two, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is fun, I'm enjoying it, I'm entertained, but where is it going? What are we going to be introduced to? But there's something at the end of episode two that spells out uh, kind of the direction the show is going, and I think a lot of fans will see that moment and go, oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere, right? And that was my feeling at the end of episode two. I know exactly why Marvel is releasing two episodes at once now, because once that happens, I think the anticipation for episode three is going to be through the roof. We're going to be doing a lot of tier lists and rankings on this channel over the next few weeks uh, once Spider-Man drops MCU-wise. So I need to know, what has been your favorite Disney Plus Marvel show so far, and what's been your favorite MCU movie or show this year? All of that in the comments down below, and if you like this video and you want to support this channel, drop your thumbs up. It really does mean the world to me. Hawkeye does just as wonderful of a job exploring Kate Bishop as it does the title hero himself. The cheerful and action-packed series is off to a good start. Seeing the culmination of what Clint has had to endure all of these years is something I never knew I need it. I'm going to refrain from giving this a score at this point because it's only two episodes, but I will give it a thumbs up absolutely. Again, it's not my favorite of the MCU shows at this point, but it has the potential to be a very charming and heartwarming, I have rhymes, uh, holiday series from Marvel. And where it's headed, I'm like, okay, how is this going to wrap up? So a lot of great questions. And then, of course, you know, what Hawkeye is dealing with, seeing that physical toll, fighting with superheroes all of these years, he knows exactly how to bandage himself up and to clean his wounds because he's had to do this when other people that he's been fighting with haven't had to. So I think that is the best part about this series, and I feel like that's going to get more intense as it goes. And to see where Kate Bishop is going uh, and how she is going to progress, I am super excited because Haley Steinfeld is so good in this show. I heard she didn't even have to audition and it makes all the sense in the world because I think at this point she is the perfect fit for this character. Everything Feige, I, I believe, wanted with her character, she's perfect. So their chemistry, their dynamic, it's what's going to keep this show going and I can't wait to see more and of course more Linda Cardellini because I love her. She's in the show as well. All right, I could talk for days. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon.